The Federal Department of Finance hires pollsters to measure Canadians' views towards the economy. In-house surveys are continuous. Researchers ask, thinking of the issues facing Canada today, which one would you say the Government of Canada should focus on most? A major worry is, what happens if I get sick? If they suddenly have a heart attack and call 911, they'll be treated with very, very quickly. But if it's something short of that, uh, Canadians are, are very insecure. Research found ahead of crime and immigration, ahead of taxes or the environment, Canadians named a bigger concern, health care. The provinces have absolute, absolute uh, control over the delivery of health care within the province. And that's one of the major problems we have in the country is because that health care is run by politicians who have a very short half-life and who are only interested in getting re-elected and have no generally ab general ability to manage a multi-billion dollar corporation, which is what health care is in each province. Is this the kind of Canada that, that we want? Uh, we've gone from uh, a situation where the federal government and the provincial government shared costs 50-50 uh, to one that is progressively devolving to the provinces who simply don't have equivalent resources. The country is aging. Of Canadians now in their 20s, about half will live to 90, by official estimate. Increasingly, Canadians are asking, how will they cope? And who will pay? The first baby boomer became age 65 in 2011. There are today 9 million Canadians who are classified as baby boomers, and approximately 400,000 people become seniors every year. Medicare for years has been a source of national pride. Now research shows Canada's system has failed to keep pace. The Global Competitiveness Report researched in part by the conference board, rates countries worldwide. Canadians in particular feel good about their health, and when you start looking at how they rank, uh, internationally it's not that great. On health and primary education, Canada ranks seventh behind Belgium and Finland, behind Singapore and New Zealand. We have a hard time politically uh, addressing some of the fundamental questions and issues that, uh, that are associated with health care. It seems that you touch it and you get burnt really quickly. It is very uneven across the country. It's uneven within a region, within a province, and that's not the way it should be. You know, we paid for a universal health care system that all of us can walk in the front door of. In some provinces, again like New Brunswick, um, they're already feeling it very acutely where the um, head of one of the uh, regions, or the health regions there, um, basically went to Twitter and said, somebody help us, we're drowning here. We've got hospitals at 110% capacity and people overflowing and emerge and it's not gonna get any better. The Commons saw piecemeal reforms. MPs proposed a private bill to appoint a national health care ombudsman. The bill was never debated. They have to wait from, to, to see the specialist in the first place, then they wait for tests that make their diagnosis, then they get put on a list for a procedure, then there's another wait, and then there's a wait for the rehabilitation afterwards. We even have people who are waiting uh, to go home. The government did adopt new regulations to recall unsafe medicines in a bill called Vanessa's Law, named for the daughter of a conservative MP who died from a prescription drug for an eating disorder. So the question is, how, how do the big pharma companies, how do they get away with this? Well, they have power and influence, and they're some of the wealthiest companies in the world, and they have no loyalty to any country. In the Senate, a committee proposed major reforms of prescription pharmaceuticals in Canada, addressing over-medication, better testing, and controls on drug shortages. Dr. Kelvin Ogilvie is chair of the Science and Technology Committee. It's a very inefficient system. In fact, in the last 30 years, there's been virtually no innovation in Canada with regard to the delivery of health care. We have lots of new medicines and lots of new joints and lots of new things of that nature. That's not innovation carried out within our health care system. So if you have a single problem and it's an emergency, Canada's the place to be. Uh, any other kind of care and uh, we're not as, uh, as good as we should be. To get the kind of fundamental change we need in the healthcare system, it's going to take more than one election cycle. 
So no politician wants to get out there and use up all his or her political capital to get a change that may not happen within their own mandate. Research shows Canadians' emergency room wait times are longer than other countries with Medicare systems. And Canadians pay out of pocket for care, more than $1,000 a year on average, for dental care and insurance and drugs. Other countries have been doing a lot more to control drug costs than Canada as we've kind of had the same regime in place since 1987, whereas you're seeing new sort of innovative forms of cost containment in other, in other countries. The PMPRB, Patented Medicine Prices Review Board, is a government agency that monitors drug pricing. Douglas Clark is executive director. UK, Italy, Sweden, Switzerland and, and France all have lower priced uh, patented drugs than we do. How much lower? Uh, it varies between 17 and 37 percent. That's significant. Yeah, yeah, it is significant. Federal research shows average drug prices are down in Switzerland and Sweden, down in Italy and France. In Canada, prices go up every year on average. Canadians now spend $14 billion a year on prescription drugs. I have on more than one occasion when I've come to this realization that I know the patient is not going to take these drugs, uh, telling them which drug to peel off first. So if we have to ration drugs, if you simply can't pay for them all, this is the one that I, of the five that I would suggest you, you stop. Now you think about how ludicrous that is, that, that I have to sort of describe what second and third and fourth tier kind of quality care is going to be. But that's what happens when, when people um, uh, have to choose between paying their rent, buying their food, and buying their drugs. Keith McIntosh represents Canada's largest pharmaceutical companies. Other countries have taken uh, efforts to, to reduce prices in their jurisdictions. Do you think drugs are fairly priced in Canada? Prices in Canada are... Um, prices in Canada are... Uh, th they're set to... Uh, prices in Canada are... But still, why, why does Sweden, Switzerland, France, Italy pay less than we do? The setting of prices uh, around the world are, are, is, is quite a, a complex system. So um, taking in all of those factors, we need to evaluate um, not only the price and the cost of drugs, but um, the value that, that those medicines bring to the healthcare system. How much money did the drug industry in Canada make last year? I, I don't know the answer to that question. Spending on patented medicine is going up in Canada. It has increased 160% as a share of the national economy since the year 2000. What is really then standing between us then and lower prices if, if government could statutorily do it? I mean, a series of meetings? Well, you know, it's not for me to say. I think there are things that we can do. You know, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really, uh, you know, um, authorized to speak beyond the realm of my, you know, but regulatory you're we could. mandate. We could. There, there are certain things that we could do internally, for sure. It's balkanized. It's driven by silos. Uh, the groups delivering healthcare don't like one another. They don't communicate with one another. Uh, it's a an, an horribly inefficient system. How will Canadians be able to afford them as this generation ages? The, the cost of, of uh, medicines is, is, a, is a, a question to consider, but, but uh, we have to evaluate how, as you said, how uh, these medicines impact the, the patients and their caregivers. And um, the fact that, that these medicines can, can bring people back to work and, and uh, alleviate the need for, for the, their families and the burden that, that, that these diseases bring to their families is, uh, um, is not insubstantial. So if you want to keep working, you go to pay for these drugs. Canadians over 65 today remain a small minority, those at the end of their working lives who need more health care. Soon, they will make up 25% of the population. When asked, they say they are worried. 
when elective surgeries are canceled and when hospitals can no longer do the things that they're supposed to do, like look after heart attack patients and cancer patients and orthopedic patients, then everybody will see this is affecting every single Canadian and uh, that will be the crisis. I think we are not far from circumstances that are getting so bad in health, regular health delivery within the provinces of the populations are increasingly going to demand a, a change. And at that point, the only thing they can possibly do is talk to one another. We're not getting uh, our money worth. And we're, if we want to sustain our health system, uh, we have to start thinking more fundamentally around what, the, what are the pillars of a sustained uh, healthcare system. So what do we want? It's more than only money. Pouring more money in the system won't be the solution.